For those of you who do not know me, I'm Jatifna and I'll be moderating today's uh, webinar session, the first session. Uh, and the second session will be uh, moderated by Alisi from IFC. Uh, that will be the Q&A session. So colleagues, uh, today's uh, session is on the cruise market. Very interesting. And uh, we will have, uh, we have here with us a proficient team of panel. And uh, through this webinar, we will understand the cruise ship market and we will get to learn from experience of local operators and stakeholders. And we will share lesson learned from challenges faced and opportunities in the cruise ship market, discuss perspectives on the growth of the cruise ship market and relevance to the future development. As per our usual practice, uh, colleagues, uh, before I introduce the panel, uh, let us all turn our cameras on so that we can have a photo session that we can put this up on our social media page. Just give a few seconds for everyone to turn on the cameras, please. And give us a big smile, a Bula smile. Okay, some people are still turning on the cameras. Just a few more seconds. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna go. Okay, just a few seconds and I will smile. Thank you so much, colleagues. So, joining us today in the panel, we have Lee Howard, Operations Officer, Tourism Fiji. We have Leone Naivalu, Port Agency Rep for Trans and Fiji. We have Samuela Matam Matangibau, Operations Manager, Teki Tours. We have Lewa Nicholas, owner, Notorious Adventure Tours Fiji. We have Elizabeth Avanga, uh, our tour coordinator, Samani Eco Tours. And we have Mr. Roy Ravana, Gravoni Island Tour Coordinator. So we have a big panel today. Big Vida Kabakalevu, the panelist, uh, for taking the time out to share with us your knowledge and experience in this space. Colleagues, this is a two hour session. The first hour, as I said, will be contribution from the panel. And the second hour is dedicated to uh, Q&A. So we want to make this a very interactive session. So please feel free to share your views. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat box as we go along. Uh, also note this session is being recorded and will be later shared on the NCT uh, website as the ministry at the moment doesn't have a dedicated website. We are still using the MCTT website. So let me introduce our first panelist, Mr. Lee Howard, Chief Operations Officer Tourism Fiji. He has extensive experience as a successful business leader in the tourism industry known for driving operational success through strategic planning and development, he is dedicated to creating a positive and high-performing culture for his team and possesses highly effective skills in designing systems and protocols that enable business to predict and monitor their performance. So, Mr. Lee, you have the floor now. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, I guess if I could just share a little bit about my background first and, and how I'm involved in the in the maritime uh, tourism sector. So uh, the last part of 10, 12 years of my career, I spent uh, working yeah, yeah. I spent working in the tourism sector, uh, particularly servicing cruise ships as um, one of the agents for ground handling. Uh, so essentially providing um, shore excursion experiences, um, transportation and whatnot. So today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about uh, cruise tourism, uh, some top lines sort of stuff. And then, of course, my colleagues will, will get down to the very basic details of um, cruise essentially for the economy. So, um, so I'll just be sharing a little bit about um, the relevance of cruise for Fiji's economy um, and also just some very vital um, data and, and information as well. So I think cruise um, from about 2010, what we know has been um, a fourfold increase in growth. Uh, in 2015, Australia was recognised as the second fastest um, 
uh, market for cruise um, just behind China. And uh, we had a very successful year in 2018 and 2019, respectively, for, for cruise. Um, in 2018, we saw roughly about 300,000 passengers come aboard various cruise sizes to Fiji. And then in 2019, um, that increased quite significantly to about 800,000. So we're seeing that more and more people are actually choosing to go cruising. And um, I think Fiji is well poised to, um, uh, to look at the various sizes of capacity ships that are coming through. So what do, we, what do we know about cruise tourism for Fiji specifically? So we know that cruise tourism generates about $90 million a year in revenue towards the Fijian economy, and that includes direct and indirect impact. Uh, we also know that it provides about 4,600 jobs in the industry, servicing specifically cruise tourism. Which is, which is quite significant. And we know that, um, that we're seeing an increased number of port visits to Fiji, particularly out of our Australian New Zealand markets. Private businesses make up about 70% of that $90 million um, economic benefit, and then the 30% um, makes up for government. We also know that um, the average cruise ship brings about an average of $300,000 in terms of berthing, whether that's in Suva, Lotoka, uh, and of course, a little bit of Savasavu. So it's about $300,000 per ship per visit to, to Fiji. In terms of visitor spend, so the average cruise passenger spends about $118 in Lotoka, about $104 in Suva, and about $102 in Denrao, $56 in Savasavu, and about $3 in Dravuni. So it averages out to about $90 per person um, when they call into, uh, into Fiji. The majority of passengers spending is on tours and um, shore excursions. 80% is essentially pre-booked tours. So this is usually done uh, pre-embarkation in, in the ship's port of um, origin. And then essentially 5% is on onshore tours and the remaining is spread across the various sectors like shopping, food and beverage, and um, et cetera, et cetera. Suva takes up the majority of port calls in Fiji. It's about 40%. Uh, Latoka receives about 20% of port calls and then the rest is spread between Sava Salvu and Djibouti as well. So how, how relevant is cruise tourism to Fiji? So let me just put things into perspective for everyone, right? So I mentioned that cruise tourism is worth about $90 million to the Fiji economy. If we were to compare that with what Australia does, the cruise tourism in Australia provides $5 billion in economic benefit to the country. The state of Queensland alone generates about $1 billion a year in revenue from cruise tourism. And it provides at least 18,000 jobs um, right across Australia. So it's a significant um, and relevant cause for, for cruise tourism. And I think it's very much relevant for, for, to, um, for Fiji, not tourism for Fiji, for Fiji. So I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit more as well. So what we know is that research is indicating that 84% of past cruises will cruise again. And this is higher than pre-COVID um, 2019 levels. We also know that 69% um, uh, of cruise passengers are looking at booking a new cruise. So essentially what the trend is, is that millennials are the new demographic cruise passengers that are traveling nowadays. So these are incredible fees, um, figures for Fiji and essentially it um, positions us well to be the hub in the Pacific as one of the ideal cruise destinations in the South Pacific. There was an economic assessment study that was done in 2019 through IFC and of course MC Triple, MC Triple T, MC Triple T I've forgotten the name of our ministry. Um, so there was an economic assessment that was done in 2019 and essentially it identified seven key areas of investment opportunities that if these were done over the next 10 years would generate a further $90 million in, of um, economic benefit to our Fijian economy. So I think there's a lot of potential there for cruise tourism to really develop and grow. And um, there's some exciting initiatives in that space as well. One of the areas that I see really a lot of potential growth is um, I think Fiji has the ability to aspire to be a turnaround destination. So essentially we have the air capacity, we have the hotel inventory. Um, the only limitation with that is um, 
some of the hydrographic charting that needs to be done in and around Fiji. So essentially, we've identified areas like South Savu, Tabiruni, Vanuwalevu, Levuka, and Kandabu. And I think when you take these into consideration, it will allow for more further economic benefit to our economy and also to our local communities in some of the outer islands. You know, in a recent conference that I attended last year, there was talk in Australia about how the expedition market in Australia is quite saturated. So I think there's a lot of potential for Fiji to capitalise on the expedition market, essentially a small to sort of mid-sized class luxury vessels, um, to position their vessels in and around Fiji. So we've seen the likes of Silver Seas, Hapeg Lloyd, um, some of these smaller sort of um, expedition ships like Seaborn that have come through. And we notice that the average length of stay from one increases to sort of essentially three. So it provides a low impact to the environment and high yield in terms of economic return. So it's a, it's a very lucrative market to try and tap into. And that's essentially what Tourism Fiji is looking at focusing on. So I know with all things, when we talk about cruise, there's the element of um, the sustainability aspect. There's all, a lot of discussions around um, what the uh, environmental issues are. And then a lot of the cruise companies today are, are spending billions and billions of dollars in terms of technology, into biofuels, and into looking at ways of traveling sustainably for the future. So the cruise industry is essentially committed to sustainability and aims to protect the oceans and destination that it visits. It has a uh, goal of achieving net zero carbon by 2015, and its efforts are already underway with billions of dollars invested in the various schemes that are, that are out there. The industry, the industry sustainability strategy is built on three pillars, reducing its carbon footprint of ships at birth, at sea, and investing in environmental technologies on board, and partnering with cities and ports on um, sustainable tourism. I think cruise lines are investing significantly in equipping ships to connect to shoreside um, electricity and reducing emissions while at berth, and also exploring new types of environmental hulls to allow for more streamlined sailing. Uh, there are advanced environmental technologies on board, including waste management, wastewater purification systems, and are often equivalent to the best shoreside treatment plants. Um, cruise lines are partnering with cities and ports to support the development of sustainable tourism practices in the destinations they visit, including implementing mobile app technology and identifying sustainable roadmaps. So cruise lines are investing in technologies to protect ocean biodiversity and have partnered with a lot of NGOs to protect ocean wildlife and coastal ecosystems. Innovation is at the heart of the industry's um, sustainability strategy and research and development are ongoing to find solutions to achieve net zero emissions. There's definitely a lot of cooperation with ports that are going on around the globe, which, needs, which means there is a need to invest in the necessary infrastructure that's critical in reducing emissions um, around the globe as well. The cruise industry is an example of a circular economy at scale with advanced systems and processes for waste management and energy use. And I think certainly there's a lot of discussion with the, with the regular cruise companies that come to Fiji in how they're looking at reducing their carbon footprint and, and also their sustainability agenda and goals for Fiji, essentially. So I think cruise tourism is very much relevant um, for Fiji, there are a lot of economic benefits, um, but it, there needs to be a very much balanced approach between economic balance and also the environmental impact as well. We're noticing that ships nowadays are moving to much bigger vessels and, <laughs> and, and the rest of the um, ground handles will be able to tell you the trend and shift from uh, just a mere four or five years ago of when we had medium-sized vessels to now larger capacity ships that are ranging of between three and a half to close to six and a half thousand. So the trend is heading to um, looking at more passengers in larger capacity ships. I think one of the goals that we have is to look at retaining or obtaining, sorry, our 2019 fit, um, levels of 150 port calls over the next two years. So I envision that by end of this year, we should see anywhere between uh, 65 and 88 port calls for the year, which is already a very, very good start. So cruises on the way up, and um, we've seen that trend with, um, 
with a younger demographic that's booking cruise. And uh, we're also seeing an incredible growth that's coming out of Australia and New Zealand, um, particularly for the South Pacific. Fiji, as a result of that, um, we'll, we'll see more port calls. And what we do know is that we're on the longer end of the cruise itineraries from out of those destinations. So essentially between 12 and 13 um, cruise night um, sail days to Fiji. So that, that's pretty much uh, cruise from Tourism Fiji's perspective. We're currently working with uh, the port agency to try and segregate the, the cruise visitor arrivals so that when we do report that, that we would have air capacity arrivals and then we also have sea capacity arrivals through cruise ships and super yachts. That is pretty much it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lee, uh, for sharing those very uh, comparative data and, and the potential for growth in this market. Uh, very much appreciated, very insightful. Um, colleagues, if you have any comments and questions, do put it in the chat box as we go along. Uh, once again, thank you, Lee. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Trans MPG Port Agency Rep, Mr. Leone Naivalu. Unfortunately, he will not be joining in person, but has done a pre-recorded video, which we will be uh, viewing shortly. Uh, so he'll be sharing uh, his experience as a shipping agent, managing cruise ships and working with local partners. Um, let me see if we can share the video, please. I'm sorry, Lissy, I can't hear that. Some of the drop down next to the uh, mic. Alex, just give us a few minutes, seconds, I would say to John, see yes, so just moving on to the next Can we move on? Sure. Yes. Okay, we'll come back. Okay, colleagues, so um, we can move on to our next speaker. Uh, take it to us, operations manager, Mr. Samuela Matangibau. Uh, so he'll be sharing with us his experience as an inbound tour operator, managing tours and excursions and working with the local suppliers. Mr. Samuela, you have the floor now. Thank you, sir. Mahawale Jatishna and Mbula Vinaka to everyone. Yeah, it was a great uh, presentation from Leroy regarding the cruise ship market. And I know that uh, we all know that this is one of the uh, segment of the uh, industry that is uh, now really growing. You know? And as he already explained, my, my point is just to speak on the experience I have in the tour uh, inbound operator. And um, I previously have worked, you know, with uh, with few of the prominent companies in Fiji, and also um, during my term, I managed um, fifteen uh, cruise brands that uh, are visiting our show, and uh, the companies uh, Royal Caribbean, uh, Carnival Cruise Line, uh, even Norwegian Cruise Line. Uh, Carnival itself has uh, nine brands in total. Okay. And the rest, you know, uh, followed by those brands which I have just mentioned. Um, these brands have already shown interest to work with, uh, you know, to, to visit the South Pacific. And, um, you know, mainly through uh, six months, you know, in a year, they move the operation down to Australia. And this is where Fiji, you know, managed to have uh, ships visiting our shop. Okay. From, from that, Take it tours, we manage the, the tours and excursions, and uh, we have manuals that are forwarded by the cruise lines that uh, there'll be a guideline for our operation. And this is what we worked on. And uh, we worked with uh, local suppliers, uh, everyone that provides the short tour programs for the day, 
and even we reach out to the outer islands, you know, for for the luxury smaller ships, and these are mainly the expedition cruise lines. So for what we have been working on, uh, the bigger cruise lines, uh, these are the passengers' capacity from 1,000 to 3,000 up to 4,000 now the latest. And we, what our role here is to expand, you know, the guest experience, not only visiting the, 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 the day cruise islands or going on a sightseeing, but we try to introduce them, you know, in uh, new uh, programs that uh, makes it more exciting for them to keep coming back to Fiji. Okay. And this is what we worked on ground level with uh, the with the operators we do assessment programs you know of the products or the new products that are coming through yeah. um, we work with these little operators or the the two operators uh, trying to um, put compile a, a proper presentation for the cruise line you know to select from okay. and in example you know, for lotoka we have around 17 uh, short tour programs. In general, we have almost the same, 17, and it's similar to Suba, which is about 15. And then we go down to Sabu Sabu. Okay? And not only that, like I said earlier, that we have uh, 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 expedition cruise lines that um, also have shown interest to come into Fiji. Now, expedition program has been, uh, as we have noticed, has been in, uh, increasing. The interest has been increasing in the last, uh, I would say the last uh, six to seven years. And there are these little cruise lines, they, they visit the islands where this, the bigger ships don't visit. So um, we, we travel down to the islands you know, to create programs for them. And uh, what is more important is um, the safety of, uh, of the guests. So that is why we do the assessment programs with the, the villagers. We do the assessment program with the, with the all suppliers. They have to be in compliance, you know, um, with uh, what is required from the cruise line. Yeah? And we also have the public health, health, health standard, as you all know, COVID when it when it strikes, you know, um, yeah, when COVID happens. You know, it put the stops, you know, to the cruising industry. And when we wanna, after 2021, then we have, uh, you know, the initiative to work with the Ministry of Health and even the government, you know, and MC Triple T in trying to push for the market to grow, you know, to open again. So uh, in August 15, uh, last year, the cruise line, uh, started to come back to Fiji, you know. So what we are seeing is there is a need, you know, to work in a certain aspect, uh, especially the infrastructure, the mapping, you know, of the, the islands uh, where the ship goes to, because these are, these are some of the things that we need to work on. Um, accesses to um, tour sites, um, we travel to Sabu Sabu. We have a wonderful uh, uh, waterfall there, Bio Sabu. But unfortunately, we could not uh, take tourists over there. Though the road is there, but it's very slippery and it's a high risk, you know, to move passengers, you know, to that uh, to the waterfall. Um, transportation segment. You know, we work with the transport providers. We try to maintain the high standard that is required of us to provide. So we work with uh, uh, local operators, local transport providers as well. You know? So in, in a way, it helps them uh, improve their service as well. You know, they bring in new buses and all that. Okay. Um, uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, get our guests on the bus if there's a crack on the windscreen. You know, so these are the little things that we, we work around with with, uh, with the transportation providers. Okay. Um, we have shore, uh, shore excursion managers that do inspection when the ship comes along. Uh, we, we are supposed to bring in the buses, line them up, and then what they do is they walk through with us, you know, the call and inspect the buses. They look at the quality of the buses. They look at all these things 
that we need we need to monitor on because this all uh, delivered to the guest experience okay, at the end of the day. Okay. Um, if we work with um, uh, problems, you know that uh, happen, you know where where we need to resolve, you know certain complaints. Um, this is um, this is the area where where uh, if guests go back online, they didn't have a, a good experience if they work with us and then they complain. And then we try to work up a resolution on this, you know, just to ensure that the guests uh, have that, uh, you know, that care for and whatever we delivered for the, uh, whatever we, we promised to deliver, we delivered on the day. And like I said, we have, uh, there's a lot of interest you know, for the cruise line to uh, wanted to come back to Fiji, but we have to deliver the service that we have promised them, you know, uh, from the beginning. And and we normally have our assessment programs that is done like every six months just to ensure, you know, that uh, the suppliers are in line with the expectation from the cruise line. Okay? And this is very important for us. And, um, most of the time we will be disturbing them and say, hey, we're coming for a visit. We just wanna have a chat through with you regarding your product, okay? And at the same time, there's a lot of demands that are coming through that sometimes um, it, it's quite challenging because when you have passengers, you know, coming off board or you have a ship that carries around two to 3000 uh, passengers on board, there's a lot that need to be done. There's a lot of, uh, uh, expectation we expect unexpected, you know, uh, during the day when it comes to uh, to operating these ships, and um, we have heard a lot of positive uh, comments recently regarding the latest uh, ships that uh, that have visited our shore. Most of them have mentioned that our servers are ten times better than the port that they visited, which is, you know, a boost, you know, for not only for for, for us, but it's a boost for the country. You know, we know that Fiji is becoming a cruise destination, uh, and there's a lot of interest. You know, with uh, with some of the new brands existed after the COVID, right? and uh, yeah, with uh, with those words, I, I believe that I've uh, shared enough with you regarding you know some of the uh, important segment or sector of our operation, and uh, just. To ensure that the the market, you know, is uh, well looked after, um, you know, there's high hopes, as Lee has mentioned, that uh, the, this industry is going to continue to grow in the years to come, uh, with uh, new brands existed after the COVID, right? and there's uh, new companies existed as well, and uh, and we see a, a, a flow of uh, cruise lines, you know, from from the north down to the south, you know, uh, in, in the past years, not only with the bigger cruise lines, but also with the expedition programs, you know, from the smaller ones. Yeah, I think uh, that is what I can share with you this morning, and I'll be happy to answer any question. You know, there be. Thank you, Mr. Semola, for sharing your experience as a tour operator and sharing on the Vista expectations in providing exciting opportunities for our cruise uh, visitors. Colleagues, uh, after reopening in August uh, 15 last year, um, we had uh, from August to December 2022, we had uh, cruise arrivals of 15,863 visitors and a cruise earnings of around 1.3 million. Um, so, Joining us next, colleagues, is uh, Notorious Adventure Tour owner, Miss O. Oh, Alice, would you want to share a video from Mr. Leone? Yes, Dr. We'll just go on to Leone right now, if that's okay. okay. All right, sure. Hey, Mbulavinaka, everyone. Um, I'm one of the operator that operates on Lotoka Wharf. So I would be sharing my experience with my team in what we do at Lotoka Wharf. So to be honest, uh, this platform, the Kushi platform is new to me. 
Uh, it's been nine months now in my operation on this platform. I've learned a lot. And so inspired by how much information we can share with our guests to enjoy their eight to nine hours stopovers in any particular wharf. Eh? I operate uh, from Lotoko Wharf. These are some of the points um, our team needs to know um, when we're marketing our product and the tools that we offer to our guests. Safety and proper protocol uh, needs to be followed at all times. Uh, so I offered uh, two tours on this platform, the land tours and island hoppings. So um, as we offer these tours, it's according to what the guests request of us when we are marketing the tours. So for the two hours tours, it will be just around Motoka itself, because uh, all, from my experience, different guests are asking for different things. And we just need to work accordingly to how they are requesting for that tour. So this is the two tours that uh, in, the, in the past cruise ship that I've been offering with my team, the two hours, which is just within Lotoka. And in this tour is just the drive through Lotoka and showing them landmark. There is no particular stop. The stop would be something like at the end of the tour, they wishes to get off in Lotoka to do some shopping and to grab something to eat and they could walk back to the wharf. So with these uh, two hours tours, um, I would um, literally drive them through Namoli village, which is the village that is located right at the heart of Lotoka city and would take them to Navutu settlement to talk about the outside settlement of Lotoka. Uh, we would go past, um, these are some of the landmark that I would uh, really be briefing our guests. And uh, Natambua High School, where we talk about the school system, how school functions here in Fiji, and so as the police station, which is right next to it. And um, you know, sharing this information, uh, information with our guests, amazingly, they are always amazed by the things that we see every day and we think like, uh, I go past this place, but for them, it's an experience. Um, and going past schools, talking about school, this is one of the very common questions um, our guests would literally ask us. It's like, all Fijian speaks English so well. Like, you know, you guys. And then that's when we start to connect the dots for them. Uh, English is the second um, language here in Fiji. It is taught and it's compulsory in every school. Either the school is located inland or outer island. Every student has to learn English. And um, like Lotoka Hospital is another landmark. We talk about uh, Lotoka City, the second biggest uh, city uh, in Fiji. And uh, all the surrounding towns, they bring all the emergency case to Lotoka Hospital. Um, and as we are talking to them about this amazing landmark that Lotoka have, it's amazing what uh, kind of conversation you can start creating uh, with your guests while you're taking them on a tour. And it's surprising the many other things that they would want to know about our country. Um, and along this drive, uh, we connect food people, culture as part of our story and showing them the different plants that most families in Fiji would grow around their home. Because as we are driving around, it's very common to see a uh, food source uh, plant that are planted around the um, homes. And they are always interested to ask like, where do the Fijian people get their source, the food source? And these are some of my personal experience and what our cruise ship guests would ask. And surprisingly, talking about food, uh, food source and um, letting them know all these other food that grows around the home, some of them have not even seen a banana tree. Some of them have not even seen a popo tree. Or right now it's avocado season to see an avocado tree or a tapioca plant or breadfruit. And because for them, they see this food uh, product only on supermarket shelf. And in, um, it's always, for me, it's always those moments that I uh, take pride of when we talk about this food and they were like, 
can you stop, please? Can we take a picture of a banana tree? Can we take a picture of a popo tree? I will have those little laugh inside of me, but this is the reality of the tour we offer and what the guests are actually experiencing as we are doing these tours. And, um, and one of the great uh, sightseeing on these drives is seeing the youth selling green coconuts. And this is another story to tell our guests that this is other source of income for these youth. They would come here every single day to do this. And it's a sight, it's an excitement for them to see. It's so encouraging for them to hear our story when we connect it that way. And um, even like seeing fruits like banana, poppers, and pineapple sold on the side of the, uh, the road, and we sell it in hips. And we tell them, for a hip, you will pay $5, Fiji dollars. They will like, oh, really? we'll pay like $5 our currency each in our country. And that's, they would like, can we just take a picture? This is crazy. You guys are getting a heap like that. This is the experience that we would encounter with our guests um, when we do our tours. So um, another experience in doing this land tour is really connecting the people food culture and pointing out landmarks, you know, and bringing things to life for them. And, uh, and it's very important that we are very clear with our guests, uh, what kind of tour we're doing with them, how many hours are we doing it with them. And we really need to be clear with all these things because we are dealing with all different kinds of people and uh, they are coming with all different needs of what they wanna see and where they wanna go. Um, to be honest, we cannot please everybody. We try to walk accordingly. Um, so in the really making it easy to offer our guests the tours. And um, some of the, some of the stop, we need, we really need to be clear with our guests that some of the stop that they need to pay, the, pay their entry fee. And this is on them because they can decide either to go in or not to. For me, um, for our experience as a tour operator on the wharf, I find it very easy that we just give that to them. Let them decide. We take them on a tour. We say, we're going to stop here. It's totally up to you. It makes it so easier, especially when you're dealing with your own currency, when they are paying for tours and... Uh, and how they and, and exchange because they we do, we cannot do any exchange of money there. We're just collecting money as they come. Sometimes guests have to run back into the ship, get change or whatever they and that takes place at the wharf. And we need to come up with a plan to make it easy for us and operator at the same time offer that uh, tour to our guests for their experience while they're here and uh, at Lotoka Wharf. And uh, Okay, my second tour is a four hours tours, which I offer. One is a two hours and one is the four hours. The four hours, our team take our guests out of Lotoka. So we travel to Nandi. And uh, when we travel to Nandi, this is other places we take them to. We take them to Vistuse Village, drive through a stopover, a garden of the sleeping giant, the mud pool, the drive through Namaka, the market, the temple, and shopping at uh, Jack's in uh, Nandi Town. Uh, the same concept, connecting the dots, the story with people, culture, as we sh take them to these places, um, sharing our story and connecting, uh, yeah, connecting all the tours with uh, our people, food and culture. Uh, VCSA Village is one of a very important historical landmark for this particular tour, because VCSA is the historical site for uh, the Fijian ancestors. This is where our ancestors first landed before they moved about uh, around Fiji, all over Fiji. So this is always very historical. And we take our time to talk about this essay. We need to be equipped with information, sharing about um, so certain places. And um, then we do the rest of the tour, the garden and everything, and it's the same. Co continue to connect stories and whatever you can share with your guests. 
The other one that always interests me is talking about the international airports. We got only one in Fiji. That's always a very interesting point as well for our guests. So they will literally ask questions. So this is it. This airport is where everybody checks in and check out from everywhere in the world. I said, this is it. And we got only one in Fiji. And if you are planning to leave the country to go anywhere in the world, this is where you come. So, um, and you know, we share who are our main um, uh, flight carrier, like Fiji Airways, as we're talking about uh, Nandi Airport. And while we come to Nandi, um, Nandi is not a city, it's a town, but it's known as a touristy town. Uh, it's a home to many three stars, five star resorts. So as we are uh, taking this tour, this is some, some of the things that we proudly share about um, the places we're taking our guests. We have Port Ndenera where our guest checks in, check out for outer islands. Uh, Nandi is one of the place that lots of land tours and outer island activities takes place. Uh, some questions. Um, sorry, are Mr. Um, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, if you could just wrap up, we are running out of time. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Would you like to finish oh. up your? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So my personal experience with all this is just, you know, really connecting your story with your product as you doing all these tours and just allowing your guests to experience the best that they can in whatever areas that you are taking them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewa. Um, colleagues, uh, this was Ms. Lewa uh, Nicholas. Uh, she is the owner of Naturalist Least Adventure Tours, and she was sharing her experience as a tour and excursion operator. Thank you, Madam, for joining us today. Uh, colleagues, now we will uh, go to Transcend Fiji presentation by Mr. Leone. Uh, Bulabinaka, and a very good morning to each and every one of you. First and foremost, I wish to take this opportunity to convey our sincere appreciation to the Ministry of Tourism and Civil Aviation in partnership with International Finance Corporation in uh, organizing this this very important uh, webinar to discuss and highlight on issues that's uh, impacting the cruise ship industry in Fiji. For me personally, I think uh, it's an important uh, approach to discuss and highlight on how we can further improve and strengthen the cruise ship industry in Fiji. It's an important market relatively because uh, it uh, it contributes to Fiji's economy. Uh, Transcend Fiji was established way back in 1997 uh, as part of uh, William and Gosling's. We are now part of the Neptune Pacific uh, Direct Line uh, Group. We are represented across uh, nine agencies in the South Pacific. And uh, we, we are continuing to grow. This has actually strengthened our position in the market. Our role as uh, the cruise ship agents in Fiji, um, it leads down to uh, ensuring that uh, the birth and anchorage bookings for cruise ships are actually done and forecasted and that there are no clashes in between. We work closely with the uh, Fiji ports and, and uh, also the commercial uh, dock operators in sub sub as well as Port Denarau Marina. Our role also includes uh, crew manning, scheduling, uh, cruise advice, uh, fuel bunkering, sanitations, vessel clearance. We work uh, relatively closely with uh, customs, immigration, uh, by security, the main border agencies that play a very important role in the cruise ship industry in Fiji. We also work uh, with our local uh, partners as well. These are the appointed uh, grant to operators. Uh, ports, the commercial dock operators, which I've mentioned before, and the island ports, um, Lebuka, Taviuni, Mbenga, Nrabuni, Kambara, and Fulanga. It's, uh, it's an important role uh, that is done mainly to assist in terms of village development and how they can independently work on their own and also assist uh, the villages as a whole. The beneficiaries of the cruise ships, uh, it, 
uh, actually trickle da trickles down from the commercial dock operators, the terminals in Suva and Lautoka, right down to the small SMEs, the shops, the eateries, uh, the transportation industries, and the private dock operators. So, in particular, it branches out. That's how important the cruise ship industry plays in Fiji and how it can, can further contribute to Fiji's economy. Now, some of the challenges that uh, we've faced in the cruise ship industry is uh, weather, I would say. So during the peak season of the cruise ships, which is uh, from September to April, these are the peak seasons for cruise ship arrivals into Fiji, and this is also in between the hurricane season as well. So weather, weather is one of the biggest challenges that uh, we face. And if you see that uh, there's a tropical depression or a cyclone approaching, this leads to cancellation of calls and also affects the cruise ship industry as a whole. One of the other aspects is uh, infrastructure. We've highlighted this uh, on, uh, on uh, quite a few forums as well, and we've taken it up to government, on how we can improve our current infrastructure. If we cannot, uh, or if we are going to delay the improvement of our infrastructure, then I really hope that government uh, comes up with an alternative plan, maybe to build a dedicated passenger terminal for cruise ships. This in return will not affect um, port operations with uh, ships with container vessels coming in for their operations and also does not uh, disrupt any operational plans that are currently in place with the cruise ships and other project vessels as well. The opportunities that we see, that we see with the cruise ship industry is the improvement on infrastructure. I really I hope uh, down the line that government can also can be looking into improving this because the cruise ship industry they uh, contribute evenly to our economy aside from the commercial docks I, I think there is room for improvement taking into account in the last five years the the income that has been generated from all the cruise ships that's arrived into Fiji and also uh, leading up to the forecasts for the next seven years. We've done our projections as far as 2030. In 2030, we've also incorporated these stats from the past five years. We can actually project and that's how we see on how ports can actually invest heavily on their capital expenditure in improving the current infrastructure. We, we've seen changes, we've seen uh, current improvements in, with the current uh, infrastructure, which is a positive approach as well. Now with, part, with the other opportunities that we see, uh, we can also market uh, other destinations in Fiji, uh, working in collaboration with our key partners. A classic example that I can uh, give out is the, is the partnership that we did with um, the Fiji Navy, MDF. MDF is the commercial arm of DFAT under, under the Australian government. We work closely in re-establishing uh, Yasawi Rara as a cruise ship destination. Now, the role that we played was the validating of the maritime charts for Yasawi Rara. This was outdated, so we took it as an opportunity to re-establish Yasawi Rara as a port of call. This was actually removed from itinerary due to the uh, charts not being updated. So we are indeed thankful to our key partners, uh, MDF, as well as the Fiji Navy for coming on board and working with us in re-establishing Yasai Rara. Right now, Yasai Rara is back on the charts. The charts has been validated by the Fiji Navy, hydrographic team at the Fiji Navy, and this has been passed, and this has been published as well, giving an opportunity for some of the cruise ships in future to revisit uh, Yasawi Rara and include it as, as part of the itinerary. Now to conclude, uh, I would like to just highlight on a few, uh, some of the key stats uh, from the past five years, uh, uh, pre-COVID. In the past five years, we've seen a total of 192 192 cruise ships 
With these 192 cruise ships, it's brought with them uh, a combined passengers and crew. We've seen a total of 541,000 passengers and crew that has transited through Fiji. Now, if we have kept a per diem spending on these 541 passengers and crew, we are looking close to $21 million. $21 million has been directly injected into Fiji's economy through the key sectors that I have mentioned in my previous uh, presentation. That's beneficial to Fiji's economy. Now with that, uh, in terms of contribution to terminal as well as the commercial dock operators, this was a total of $17 million because the four ports, they benefit out of this. It, it all depends on the it all depends on the gross tonnage of the cruise ships that call in Fiji. That's how the tariffs are calculated. So in conclusion, based on our projections for the next seven years, we see an increase in number. For the past five years, we've seen that it the trend has actually fluctuated. So in order to improve this and to also further market Fiji, we need to actually work together in collaboration to the Krishi brands that we represent and to say that we've got improved infrastructure and we are and we request that you increase the frequency of your calls into Fiji. That's something that uh, I think government as well as the private sectors, we can all work together to actually improve this in the future. Now, these stats, uh, these stats that I've mentioned in my slide is, uh, is derived from uh, uh, estimated costings. So it's not actual. It's just based on estimates, which I can actually share with the forum if you require that. Uh, all in all, our, our managing director is also part of this uh, webinar, should you have any questions. But if you have any questions that you would like to direct it uh, towards me, please feel, feel free to do so. I think the chair would be able to actually share my information and actually my email addresses that, that I can actually share with you. And if you have any burning questions. Once again, uh, I look forward to working with uh, each and every one of you in future. In uh, working towards improving our infrastructure and working towards uh, um, improving the challenges that we continue to face in the cruise ship industry in Fiji. Once again, a big one. Thank you. Colleagues, uh, this is Mr. Leon and Evalu from Transam Fiji. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can put it in the chat box and the team will also be, also be sharing his uh, uh, email address uh, if you have any questions to direct at him. Um, so we'll move on to our next speaker for the day, um, which is uh, Sawani Ecotours to our coordinator, Ms. Elisabeth Tawanga. She's originally from Naruvai village in Bua and have maternal links to Nasolo Wainunu in Bua. Uh, Ms. Vanga, you have the floor now. Uh, Ms. Vanga, I think you are on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. I'm sorry for that. Um, like I was saying, uh, uh, Jutishna has already introduced me. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Tavanga, and uh, I'm a proud mother to five lovely children, 13 grandchildren, a native from uh, um, Bua province, but have stood my marriage vows here in Sawani that uh, till death do us part. And in Sawani, I remain loyal to till death. Um, Tourism was uh, first introduced to Sawani Village uh, in 1998 uh, with uh, Mr. Eroni Luviniali, who was the then director of tourism, and uh, Mr. Max uh, Stock from uh, ATS Pacific, who gave us the thumbs up uh, to operating the Sawani Eco Tours. Uh, 
we have been fortunate and privileged to have learned uh, the trade of guidance to our visitors, courtesy of Asia Pacific, and uh, uh, take it to us. Communication between uh, our ground handlers and uh, the village through the tour coordinator, who is always on the alert for the preparation of the arrival of uh, uh, cruise ships into the village. Our focus is uh, always on the cleanliness of the village and the overall safety of uh, the touring party. At this point, I am proud to state that uh, there has never been an accident or an incident for that matter to tarnish our record of uh, good works in operating uh, our tour guides. Uh, on the day when we receive our visitors, we are given the expected uh, departure time from the wharf and also the expected departure time from the village. And we'll normally try our very best to fulfill uh, our obligations uh, to the touring party in performing the expected program. On arrival, the bus is according the respect it deserves by two young men carrying war clubs, slowly marching past to convey the bus to the bus bay. The mere experience of being ex escorted by warriors indicate the importance of uh, the visitors to us, and their being traditionally escorted is uh, a sure sign of uh, respect. Bula is uh, uttered as greetings to all our visitors while uh, they are being escorted to their uh, inside the community hall and in the comfort of uh, their seats, they are directed to the restrooms uh, facilities that we have. The traditional welcoming ceremony is conducted and the visitors get to witness firsthand the solemn uh, respectable uh, ceremony uh, known as our cover ceremony. Yangona or Kava is a Fijian link to the past. It is a tradition so in, uh, extricably woven into the fabric of culture that uh, life without is uh, unimaginable. Yes, it is right. It is rightfully said that uh, if you have not tasted the Fiji Kava, when you come into Fiji, you have not visited Fiji yet. The village tour is the highlight of uh, coming to Sawani village. And as you get to witness firsthand the closeness in our house, depicting the intertwining relationship of each household uh, to their immediate neighbors. Getting to see local foods like uh, oranges, mangoes, kavika, um, Kamkot, breadfruit, ndalo, and cassava, to name a few, and how they're being planted uh, close to, the, to our dwelling houses indicates their importance in our dependency on them as uh, edible supplies. Beautiful flowers and scented plants like frangipani, yudi, and mokusoi all contribute to the uniqueness of our village and our culture. And uh, this is uh, um, shared with joy to our visitors who take great interest in knowing them. And after the village tour, we come back into the community hall uh, in uh, where we share uh, juice, fruit juice and cookies to quench uh, their thirst and their hunger. And we are again introduced to the art and craft of our women folk uh, that are, they are known for weaving of mats, hats, uh, coconut fans, and others that is displayed with uh, pride. Souvenirs are sold to our visitors at reasonable prices, and we are thankful for the chance to earn a few dollars to help in our household. Uh, going back to the community hall, we are introduced to coconut scraping and coconut grating and uh, uh, informing them of the importance of uh, uh, having coconut as uh, one of our staple foods. After which uh, the guests uh, uh, get to witness uh, a lively performance of our traditional Fijian dance. We end our day with uh, lively entertainments of snake dancing or twimboto with our visitors and of which we sincerely hope that they have fully enjoyed our day's program. One of the challenges we faced uh, in this industry is that of uh, communication. Yet we are thankful that interpreters do come in uh, to provide uh, uh, interpretation to be provided 
for us and for our visitors so that uh, uh, we are able to communicate. Another challenge for us is uh, to try and maintain uh, or even better our performance in our day's uh, program. Our greatest achievement of tourism in coming to Sawani is the community hall. Uh, we have a community hall that was built uh, exactly from the money that was derived from tourism. And for that, we are always grateful uh, for the introduction of tourism into Sawani village. Renovations to the toilet facilities and uh, been upgraded and uh, the Turangani Koros uh, office in which uh, I'm sitting in right now. We had computers uh, been uh, bought for us, which uh, really helped us with uh, administration work. And uh, we have uh, food parks uh, right around the village and street lights. And this was all part of the pact. On the other hand, we know that it is a challenge for us to maintain our decorum and the integrity to our culture. We do remind our visitors that ladies are to wear a wrong if they are wearing shorts or long pants, and gentlemen are asked to take off their hats or caps when taking the village tour. Moving forward, we anticipate that we cannot sit on our laurels, and for that, we would like to dream big. And one of our dreams is to build our summer house uh, that would enable us to host 500 plus guests outside. Um, on that note, uh, we thank uh, ATS and uh, Take It Tours for coming in to help us. And uh, we also take this time to thank you and allowing us to be part of this uh, important talk this morning. And uh, we hope that uh, tourism being a thriving business we still need to upgrade our facilities to cater for more and opening new, new doors. And we do hope that we will achieve our dreams and continue showcasing Sawani, Fiji, the way the world should be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth, for sharing your story um, as a tour operator in Sawani Village Nita Siri. And thank you for taking uh, out your time uh, to be with us here today. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, if you have any questions, uh, she'll be here for our Q&A session. So our final speaker for the day is Ravuni Allen Tour Coordinator, Mr. Roy Ravana. He'll be sharing his experience as a tour and education operator on Ravuni Allen Kandavu. He is the Secretary for Natus Natusara Tourism in Ravuni Allen Kandavu and has been part of the committee for the past 20 years. Um, Mr. Ravana, you have the floor now. Sir, you are on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay, my apologies. Um, first and foremost, I would like to extend my big thank you to the Ministry of Tourism and Civil Aviation and also uh, IFC for this great opportunity, uh, this forum. Um, I'll just... Uh, give a little walkthrough in uh, what we do as a committee in Rarunia. Um, well, we have uh, uh, 20 plus boats in Rarunia this year. And um, Rarunia, is roughly there's about 200 people that live on our little island. And uh, we do have a little Kindian primary school. Whenever the boat lands on Rarunia, um, uh, there are sets of rules that apply during the day. Uh, we don't allow uh, the villages to go beyond the village boundary or the beaches uh, on both sides of the island because the island, we basically give this to our tourists for the day. Like the island is yours for the day. That's, that's how we put it. Uh. And uh, there's always someone there at the beachfront uh, at the end of the pontoon to welcome and greet and also take questions and answers on arrival of the tenders. Uh. Um, we do have a little kinder and primary school and uh, um, our visitors are allowed to walk through the village, take pictures, enjoy the scenery, uh, the tracks, 
um, and also the tracks that are along the region right up to the hilltop. Eh? There's a lot of activities like boat ride, we have massages, breeding of air, a lot of selling of food items, refreshments and uh, lunches, uh, you name it. Eh? So that's basically what we do. We also provide uh, entertainment and uh, make the pigeon dance during the day. And um, I would also like to uh, take this time to uh, thank Carnival Australia, uh, who has assisted Dravuni uh, in terms of development uh, since 2012. Huh? Uh, they are the ones who uh, uh, assisted us in uh, putting together a lending platform of Quantum, uh, and also uh, the navigational aids beacons uh, uh, at the Herald Passage where the boat comes in, and also in the lagoon. There were a few areas. Uh, there was roughly about six, six beacons, uh, plus uh, the huge uh, pontoon where the tenders uh, um, come in. So, uh, and also a big thank you to the government for uh, the assistance towards um, kind of a little Australia in allowing uh, DT concession uh, on the importation of our spare parts of the floating jetty. Uh, this is quite an expensive exercise. It's a wear and tear thing. And uh, after the big donation, our job was to maintain it. And if there's a wear and tear, we have to uh, get the spare parts from overseas. Eh? And we are so thankful also for uh, canoe shipping for the great assistance in uh, making life easy for us in bringing spare parts eh? when there's going to issues on the island. Uh, like I said, it's a, a quite an expensive exercise to bring these spare parts. And uh, also a big thank you to government for always coming in to assist us in terms of, um, of this duty concession. Eh? Um, that's uh, the big assistant from uh, Carnival Australia. And uh, the cruise ship has benefited us uh, for so many years. Uh, we built a community hall uh, through this, uh, the cruise ship arrival in Dravuni. Uh, we have uh, also um, uh, renovated and extended our little kid in our primary school. Our solar has been installed through this, uh, uh, cruise ships uh, and uh, also the families have uh, been assisted uh, in so many ways uh, uh, in terms of education and uh, and, and, and all that. So uh, we are so thankful uh, uh, for that. And also apart from the benefits, there's also challenges that we go through. Uh, uh, one of the beacons, uh, the navigational aids, uh, since 2016, uh, uh, these navigation aids on the beacons have been down. Uh, this is the passage, the Harrow Passage, where the boat comes in. Uh, there were two on the, um, the side of the entrance of the passage, and also uh, uh, there's another one uh, um, in the lagoon, more closer uh, to the passage. Yeah? Uh, these are very uh, important beacons because um, as of now, we have to uh, send three boats, physically go out there and be markers uh, when the boat comes in and also when it leaves in the afternoon. So it, it, it's quite a task, uh, especially during uh, very bad weather. We have to be out there uh, with these three boats and be uh, markers. Uh, for the boat to come in and also going out in the in the afternoon and um, uh, we have uh, uh, requested this to 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 the government uh, also a request to the sea pilots uh, they've also written to government uh, requesting uh, government's assistance in uh, erecting these beacons again uh, uh, like I said, 2016, uh, these beacons have been down. Uh, it's about seven years now. And uh, I've also uh, uh, tried my best in engaging with Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji uh, through the Navigational Safety Offices. Uh, we have met. Uh, last meeting them was last year. And uh, as of today, um, uh, the beacon are still down, and uh, uh, 
uh, we are hoping uh, that the government could uh, seriously look into this, especially the number of votes to Nrabuni have increased uh, this year. And uh, we do have to have two shipping agencies. Uh, one is Kano Shipping that deals with PO shipping. And we also have one new one, Swa Shipping, have just started a uh, last year with us. And so right now, these two shipping agencies that are. Uh, that, uh, that uh, um, work with us uh, uh, in Rivuni. So uh, the key opportunities there for government would be uh, installing those navigational aids. Uh, and um, also um, another challenge for us is uh, because this pontoon, uh, we cannot keep uh, this uh, landing platform after the day of use when the boat comes in to have it uh, out there in the sea. Yeah? We have to dismantle these panels and physically lift all these pieces back on the beach and remove all those dog bones. So it's quite an exercise. So we have to commit all the young men, uh, young boys in the village uh, to be there in big numbers in order to uh, unlock uh, this landing platform. So uh, um, that's the challenge. And the, the request here is uh, an opportunity for the government if they could assist us in, in maybe having, um, how shall I put this, uh, maybe a lever kind of thing or a pulley system where the panels can be dragged to the beach because it's not too far away from the high tide level, just about 20 yards on the beach. Otherwise, we physically leave this, and some of these panels uh, carry water. So it's quite a big task for us to physically re remove these panels and uh, put it on the beach. So if um, um, government could look into this area and trying to help us in uh, somehow uh, making something life easier for us, in, uh, apart from lifting, or something that we, we can drag and bring all these huge panels back onto the beach. Because after that, we have to carry this again uh, out uh, into the sea and lock all this landing platform, these panels again. So that's basically how we uh, set up this uh, landing platform. And um, like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the wear and tear issue is uh, an expensive uh, uh, pontoon. Uh, when it uh, takes place uh, year in, year out. And uh, if uh, government could also assist us in uh, terms of this uh, DD concession, I think the last one uh, we applied and uh, we didn't get it. Eh? So uh, this is a Vanua based committee, and uh, we have to really dig deep uh, uh, to pay um, for this duty uh, added to. Uh, um, the pontoon pieces that's coming from overseas. So if our government could look into this area in uh, making a quick turnaround in assisting us in this uh, duty concession. Um, they did help us uh, in the past. Uh, in the last one, it took uh, quite a very long time and, and we didn't get it. So um, in terms of uh, our five years projection, um, we are basically uh, working on a water harvest project. Uh, it has worked with us. Uh, uh, we are trying to get uh, additional water tanks or water reservoir. Uh, we would like to uh, ensure that all houses in the village uh, on one side of the house guttering, it goes and feeds the reservoir or the water tanks eh? and the other uh, belongs to you. Uh, so that's the, the, the water harvest project that uh, we are working on and also our little Kindian primary school. Uh, um, we are planning uh, to also have another accommodation uh, for our teacher. Otherwise, uh, it has been a benefit uh, to our Kindian primary school in the past years. Uh, we are so thankful for these cruise ships uh, that are coming in uh, all these past years. So uh, that's basically from Rabuni. And uh, before I finish off, uh, on behalf of our committee, not to serve tourism, and also the Vanua, uh, we extend an invite uh, to the government and the, the major stakeholders, even the ministry, to come over to Nrivuni and witness uh, 
what we go through, eh? uh, right from when the boat comes into the passage, uh, how we have to be physically there with those broken uh, beacons, and also how we um, unlock these pontoons or hook up the pontoons on the beach, and also our services and activities on the day uh, on the island. So that is an invite from us. And hopefully, uh, since we have uh, 20 plus boats this year, uh, we are looking forward to, to having some of the official come uh, and spend a night or two uh, before the boat comes in. And uh, thank you very much once again. Thank you, everyone. Naka. Thank you, Mr. Ravana, for sharing our experience. And thank you for the invitation to the government and ministry. Uh, we look forward to coming to Kandavu. And uh, also, we have taken note of all the challenges that you have shared. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, colleagues, we have come to an end of part one of the session. Uh, before I hand it to my co-facilitator for the Q&A session, I uh, just wanted to share with the team that... Uh, um, we, for the past few years, we have been working on the code of conduct for tourism service providers. I'm happy to share that it has been endorsed yesterday and soon the ministry with your assistance will be implementing this on the ground. So I think applaud to uh, getting the uh, code of conduct endorsed and for all your contribution in making this happen. Thank you so much. Alisi, over to you. Naka Jonti, and uh, thank you so much to our great panelists. Uh, we had some really good uh, insights there and uh, first-hand experiences uh, from our speakers. And, you know, we see the significance of the cruise market, especially in terms of the sheer scale and the geograph uh, geographical uh, coverage in the Pacific. We see about the, we've seen um, about the past growth and um, its future potential for Fiji. We know the contribution it makes to the economies of Fiji and the Pacific region, as well as its opportunities to build on past uh, successes uh, to improve um, the value of tourism revenue. So we have we have probably about 13 minutes uh, for the Q&A. So we'll go get straight into it. Again, our panel uh, today, um, Lee Howard from Tourism Fiji. We have uh, Samu. Sam Matakimba from Techie Tours. We have Lewa Nicholas from um, Nautilus Adventure Tours in general. Ilse Pedi Tawanga from uh, Sawani Eco Tours and Roy Ravana from uh, Dravuni, Dravuni Island. So team, if, um, if you have any questions, this is the time we can, um, you can raise your hands and you can pose a question directly to the, the panel. It's a great opportunity for you to ask any of those questions. Again, this webinar is so important. The feedback, the comments that you will give will be helping to inform the National Sustainable Tourism Framework and helping the ministry um, in that regard. Do you have a question from registered uh, guest? Is that Aritema? Yes, it's me. Go ahead. Just a question, because uh, for me, I'm a Sailander Tours operating in Suva. And most of the time, we don't have uh, clients, eh? because the uh, ridges are getting loose. So if the Take It Tours in ATS just uh, give us a chance to give us uh, you know, the spillovers for us, the local tour operators, please. Uh, that's uh, only my question for today. Thanks. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, um, I think Samu and, and, and Lee uh, probably could uh, respond to that. And I think Lee's already um, responded to you on the chat uh, box as well, uh, Artema. Naka. Audience, any questions from the audience for our great uh, panel of speakers? Okay, if there's none, probably maybe just to pose a question to the, the panel and probably this is specifically for, for Lee and uh, Samu. Uh, in terms of port rating, you know, sorry, um, well, Matilita has raised her hand. So let's, uh, let's give the floor to Matilita from Domoika Adventures 
tools. I want you to go ahead. A question, uh, I think, to the panel um, and government as well. Uh, I think this is related to a question that was uh, just asked by uh, the one before me. Uh, sorry. The, these, the uh, local communities that would like to be part or would like to be, you know, would like to be part of these tours, uh, but they don't have access to the market. How difficult it is, is it for them um, to register or for them to be part of this, um, be part of um, um, the tours? Do they have to be registered as a tour or could they find any assistance through government to provide, have their services available? So for instance, we've got um, the uh, community down at Naikorokoro that features the Joski Thumb that's on the $10 note. That, that's, you know, that, that's a community that's uh, trying to be part, part of um, uh, the tourism sector for, for community at community level. Uh, so I think that's a question because a lot of communities um, have seen the cruise ships come, um, but I'm not able to answer that question. Um, I also have not been able to tap into this area where guests that would want to visit the communities near Suva, in and around Suva, um, to get this guest over. So that, that's just a general question on the floor. How difficult is it to get these communities on the platform? Probably we'll, uh, we'll ask someone just to respond to that first and maybe the other panels could also join in. Okay. Um, that, that is a, quite a famous question that I normally happen to be asked, you know, in the past years. Eh? How do we um, how do the, uh, uh, get the tours into the cruise programs? Um, as you have heard that, uh, you know, we have, we work with uh, the cruise line. We have nominated tour operators, short tour operators in Fiji. As for Fiji, um, we have ETS Pacific, we have Techie Tours, you know, we have Rosie and Rosie, those are the, a few of the nominated operators appointed by the cruise line to look after all the uh, short tour programs. Um, it's easy. You can come through the tour operators or the nominated short tour operators, and uh, we can work with you in, um, you know, getting your programs on board. But what is important is that the programs, as you have heard during uh, the discussions, that uh, um, in Suva there is like 17 programs. Uh, in Lotoka is about 17 programs as well. So all of these programs, like villages, you know, uh, any sort of land tours that come through the appointed tour operator, and we worked with you to introduce you into the cruise line uh, office. Eh? And, the other, the other. and uh, uh, in, in saying that, um, there needs not to be any similarity of, of, of the program that is already present and the one that needs to be introduced in. Okay. So there needs to be a point of difference in that manner as well. So like Sawani is one of the villages that uh, we use. Okay. What Sawani is offering is different from Waibo and Nailililili. Okay. Whichever villages that want to come in, it has to have a unique point of difference that will uh, that will assist um, the the Shorex team on board the cruise line to market your product. You know? There needs to be a point of difference. Not all I mean all villages they can do they can offer the same experience. Uh, you have the welcome ceremony, you have the entertainment, you have the village tours. What point that you have, what unique point that you have that, that, that can create the selling of your tours, you know? So these are the unique points, eh? So as you see, there are different experience from Lautoka, different experience from Suba and Sabu Sabu. Okay? In, in that manner, like I said, you can contact either one of us for either ATS or Tiki Tours, you know, let us know what of your product you need to have a, a full description of the program. You need to have some notes, you know, what are the point of a difference in there. Okay, you can give us your cost on that. And then we will um, organize an assessment program to come for a visit and then fine tune some areas before we present it to the cruise line. Okay. We are only offering to the cruise line, but the cruise line 
is the one that's going to make the decision, okay? Whether to um, accept your tours or because they're going to do some comparison with the program that is already existed. I'm, I'm sure you, you're getting my point here. Okay. Would that help? Nakasamu, I think uh, that answers Matalita's question. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for that. I think I, I got the point taken. I, but I do look forward. I look forward to the challenge and um, hoping to get, get on board and learn more about uh, this area. Thank you. Naka. All right. Naka. Oh. Probably we'll just move to Lydia. Lydia's got a hand up. If you can just unmute yourself, Lydia. You'll need to un you'll need to unmute yourself. We can hear you. So on the bottom of your screen, you'll have uh, an icon there I, uh, that's muted. So just press it to unmute. Okay, yes. there you go. Bula again, everyone. Nisam Bula Binaka. I'm Lydia. I um, I'm from Fiji Culture Village, which is based here in Nandi. I'm trying to contact with uh, uh, Samu um, in regards to getting us um, uh, been a part of that or being a partner. Um, I would like if there is any documentation in, in regards to all these that are required from there, uh, from the cruise ship, um, is it possible that that can be printed and I will and then for us to do this? Well, uh, for us at the Fiji Culture Village, uh, we are just five minutes away from uh, Nandi. And uh, what we do is uh, we do all the combination and we do cultural uh, show. We do the cover ceremony. Uh, we have a tour of the village. When I say the tour of this village, um, if you have been in Nandi or going away to Suva, you look, there's a big board call, um, and the sign is right there, Fiji Culture Village. You'll see the big burekalo there. So this is what we do. Um, when we bring our passengers, um, we welcome them with welcome songs. And our team will be there to sing them Mambula Malaya. And then um, we brief them on the tour and then we take them on our village tour. When I say the village tour, we have individual Burris who do demonstrations of pottery making. And then the next um, Bure will be, uh, we, we show them the Fijian artifacts where uh, our team are doing that and they're from Lao. And then the other one will be um, uh, weaving mats and then the other one that uh, Bure will talks about the coconut tree and its usage, and you can see it displays right there. And apart from that, we do um, um, another another Bure that do uh, masi uh, making, and then to we take them to the Murakalo, We talk to them about before missionary arrives, and it's all fully guided tour with our tour guide uh, doing this commentary. They all matured and very very good um, with all their explanation on this. Um, and then we also do, the other option given is we we do fire dancing in the night when we do our night tour, or if during the day we can do, um, we do cover ceremony and make it at the same time. It's a duration of three and a half, uh, three hours uh, of this. And we do lunch as well. And uh, if there's a request of fire walking, we do have uh, some of our boys who do that and they come from the tribe. So this is something that uh, I would love. And if there's documentation that we need to feel and we need to discuss, I would love to do that. And I really admire the way uh, me, uh, Lewa did her. So we would love to do that. Vinaka. Vinaka Lydia. Um, I think you were breaking up at the point where you were asking your question. We yeah. didn't quite get your question. I think it was supposed to Samu. Okay. Yes, so um, it's it's the paper documentation. Paper Vinaka, okay. yes, the requirements. Okay, Vinaka, Vinaka, Lydia, um, I think we've uh, discussed on the documentation side of um, your operation, and we have discussed this earlier prior to this. Um, you know, one thing that we need to remember that uh, these cruise lines, when they're operating, safety is paramount. Okay? 
And uh, part of the documentation is to provide uh, in your insurance cover. Okay. Uh, after COVID, after COVID, you know, it is it is uh, compulsory for every suppliers to include who are, need to be part of the show excursion programs for not only Carnival but all other brands that they need to provide an insurance cover. Okay. So. Um, our region, the limit is around uh, uh, two million Fijian. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah two point five million. If you have that, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's fine. So once we have that documentation, and also we do the assessment again of your program that we see it fits to be featured uh, into the into the into the cruise line market, then of course we will work with you on this. Okay. Um, you, you, you can message me, you can send me an email on, on a day that we can come for a visit, you know, just to assess the program again, because I remember this was offered, you know, in the past before COVID, eh? but uh, after COVID, there was no assessment done you know, uh, regarding your tour program. Yeah, so just the documentation of that. Yeah, just the documentation on that, you know, and uh, I mean, this is for everyone as well that needs to be part of the show excursion programs. No, they, they need to have the insurance. Because if anything happens, yes. you know, don't put the plan to, AT, uh, to ATS or Teki. Okay. Um, it, it, everybody, you know, um, in other countries, they are suing each other. You know, so we want this sort of a culture that happened in other countries if an incident happened. But for, for our region, we need to, to come up to that level and just, you know, paramount for the guests to be covered. You know when they are on tour. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you so much. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, we'll be sharing the uh, speakers' contacts after this webinar, so you can uh, get in touch with them directly for your for any questions that you have. We have a hand up. Um, we did. I think we did a hand. We had a hand up for one of someone's registered guests. I think we have a few registered guests on the call. Okay, they put the hand up. Uh, Lewa, go ahead. Uh, just one question for Mr. Samu, in regards to as being the main uh, operator on the you know on the warfare like ATS, you guys, um, you know like uh, with Lotoka, the cleaning of the wharf. Is, uh, I don't really know who is supposed to be looking after that. And, you know, because there was an article that was actually released about Lotoka Wharf, how black it was. So it was not something that was the, that affected the guests, but it's actually something that is affecting us as well as small operators. So what, who are the people that we are supposed to be, you know, addressing this complaint? Is it the main two operators like you guys, or it's from the wolf side? Because that's one, something that I find that it's really kind of like a struggle for many of us when we come there. The whole wolf is really black. So any setup or anything, by the time we are done, everything we spread out there with our shoes is all black. Sorry, but yeah. we'll get the probably could respond to that, and then uh, maybe some you can add on if there's anything else. Well, Lawa, thank you very much for your question. Uh, I think um, your question really feeds into the plans that we have here at Ministry uh, for establishing a uh, National Cruise Association. Prior to the pandemic, we had just established the committee and uh, the members for the association and then uh, unfortunately the pandemic came about and then there was a reshuffle of uh, some of the committee members who are no longer here at the ministry so uh, it has been a conversation that uh, tourism fiji has been having with uh, jacinta lal who's the director for tourism here at mtca and essentially the idea of the association is to be the organization that is lobbying with stakeholders for issues like this that are arising. 
So uh, the committee or the association would be responsible for steering and lobbying for any policy with government, uh, any stakeholder engagement to address any issues at the wharf level, as well as um, uh, you know anything to do with visitor arrivals on cruise ships. Up. So momentarily, um, I think that is something that we need to have discussions internally with ports. There has been some concerns that have been raised uh, specifically to Tourism Fiji about um, cruise ships arriving into port and the port operation is um, still running behind the scenes. And so as Samu had mentioned, uh, safety is absolutely paramount. And so we want to be ensuring that there's regular dialogue to address some of the common issues that are coming up. So yeah, hope that answers that. Not only. I think um, uh, Liz answered that uh, uh, very well. So we'll probably jump on to our next uh, question. And I think uh, registered guest, uh, you're unmuted. Do you want to pose your question now? Before I moved on, move on to guided uh, walks. Oh, Super. okay, 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 cool, cool. That's cool, cool, cool. Okay, probably we'll, we'll go to you, Peter. Okay, cool. Uh, firstly, sorry, I missed the presentation. I came in towards the end. I really just wanted to make a point, but I think Marita had answered that in uh, in the comments section. As I listened to, to the question, I think for me as a very new operator in Suva doing guided walks for the city, our experience is completely different. We're looking at urban histories um, and, you know, trying to look beyond the kind of colonial facade, which is which is the heritage built landmarks in the city. We're trying to tell a different story. And I think for me, uh, which Marit had answered, is that like, how do small operators like us become quite re ready? Because I think I want to do the cruises like everybody else. And but I'm not ready. I don't have the insurance coverage. I don't have the 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 child protection policy, you know, kind of things that I ought to have. I'm not even ready to, we don't even have uniforms yet. And so I kind of just wanted to make a comment. Uh, I will though, I will soon. <laughs> I just feel as though, uh, yeah, I just felt like I want to do the cruises, but I'm not ready. And I wondered who, which other operators were kind of ready. And I think I've been mentored by Talano Trex. I'm very lucky um, to have that kind of mentorship. And uh, yeah, I think I just really wanted to make a comment. It really wasn't a question. I think small operators needed to be ready to take on the cruise ships. They needed that kind of coverage. And uh, I know I know I'm not ready. I will be soon, uh, brothers and sisters, but I'm not at the moment. So I just really wanted to make that comment. That's all. Thank you very much. Can I just answer that question? Yeah. Uh, Peter. Peter. Peter, well, thank you very much for your comment. And um, I was just having a chat with Marita because uh, she posted on the chat just in regards to insurance. Uh, so some of the ground handlers probably might not like me saying this, but um, the insurance policies that the ground handlers have essentially allows them to provide some level of courage, a coverage for um, some of the experiences out there. So essentially, um, Whilst, whilst there is a need for every businesses to have the insurance, um, previously in the past, they've, they've been able to allow a drop down in coverage to cover some of the programs that are out there. Um, but that needs to be a conversation that you have with the ground handler to talk through the nature of your business, the element of risk, which then goes into an assessment um, phase. So um, my, my uh, advice to everyone who is looking um, at the Shorex program is uh, to look at all the different aspects of what your selling points are, your level of risk, your um, assessment on the level of um, activity, whether it's uh, low activity, medium impact activity or high strenuous activity. Um, historically, Cruise has been uh, geared to an older demographic, but that's slightly shifting. We're seeing more and more younger um, uh, age brackets that are coming into the cruise um, space of travel. So uh, please continue to have those conversations with the tour operators. They'll be able to guide you. It is a very long process to get involved into the Shorex pro program. And sometimes it could take anywhere from three to 12 months. 
because of the level of um, extensive work in applying for the program. So everything from assessments, if you're offering food and beverage, there will be an assessment on that, your quality control in terms of food, how you handle it. There'll be assessment on your risks, like I mentioned, the different strenuous levels of activity. Um, and then also your assessment on insurance policies. If you're a water sport based activity, your insurance policy would probably be more higher versus a, you know, um, a walking tour around Suva as such, because the element of risk is, is quite different. So, um, yeah, so please have those conversations with the operators. And like I said, it is a very well long process. So I, I hope that sort of answers it for, for you, Peter. Okay. So start, Peter, even if you feel you're not ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you are ready. <laughs> uh, can I just make a little comment? Uh, you know, I have been doing uh, tours from cruise ships, but it's been coming kind of like not official. Like some people find me on the map through Google or through Facebook, they see the reviews and then I get a booking of four that ends up being a booking of 12 with the cruise ship on the day. But so it's not coming directly from the cruise ship, it's from people finding the experience online. Um, and then maybe I also wondered too that maybe there's a space for conversations with smaller tour operators with each other because this checklist that um, you guys, you know, the, the gentleman just mentioned, um, even, even though we bef before we have the conversation with the tour operators, what is that checklist and what, what are these kind of little tiers of engagement that you said, the food thing and then the high impact engagement thing? Um, I don't think some tour operators that I had just see, you know heard the questions from um, even having those conversations. So that checklist is really good for kind of us to have just in the bag, just so we kind of looking and kind of reflecting upon it. Um, and actually, actually see, you know, what we need to do to be pre prepared to serve that that category of um, of guests. Thank you. Yeah, I think the challenge with that, Peter, is you have to understand is that there are quite a few different brands that come through to Fiji, yeah? and every brand has their own requirement um, for onboarding shore excursion experience. So the checklist will vary according to the different businesses. So essentially, um, uh, the right way to go about it is to have those conversations and to talk through the nature of, of your business so the team can then best look at what are the um, requirements for that. Now, also remembering just because, so Carnival is quite a large um, entity for cruise, right? So within Carnival, you have Holland America, you've got Seaborn, you've got P&O Cruise, you've got um, uh, Princess, Carnival UK. So there's all these different brands and they all contract very differently um, from each other. So essentially you might get contracted to Holland America, but you might not get contracted to PO. So again, every every brand has its own different requirements. So it's a very, it's a very, like I said, it's a very tedious process. So your best solution is to have those conversations with the ground handlers where they can who can guide you on on what's required for the different brands. So yeah. And I mean, just to add to that, I think everything you're doing already, Peter, you know, in terms of getting an online presence, you know, is obviously really um, great and, and getting those reviews coming in because you're obviously offering an experience that is relatively low volume. Um, so it's very unique, but it might not be something that's going to necessarily get some of the, the bigger companies interested because it's always going to be a, a low volume kind of um, product until you've got a whole bunch of trained guides that I know you're working on as well. Great. Thanks so much, team. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, so there's a question from registered guest. Is there a way we can offer the experiences or services before cruise ships get into port so tourists can almost pre-order the experience of their choice? And same. So I think uh, Sam has already highlighted this. You need to work with your ground handler. And ultimately that whatever is provided from the ground handler to the cruise, cruise ship and the cruise ship makes the ultimate decision. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, also generally, you know, when people, people in, in say Australia and New Zealand have the luxury to be able to, um, pre-book their excursions because of the accessibility, right? So they have the ease of access. So um, so I went on a cruise quite recently and I hadn't actually been on a cruise for a very long time. And from the moment you book your cruise, 
you are given instructions to download an app. You can download the app and then essentially you can have a look at what some of the programs are on the ship, what some of the um, tours and experiences are. And it just allows you ease of access to be able to pre-book everything. So I guess that's probably one of the unique selling points that um, Cruise has to offer its guests, which is probably why we see, you know, around 70 to 80 percent of people are usually pre-booking things quite early. Okay. So um, sometimes you, you might find that um, uh, wholesalers and travel agents do essentially offer, you know, the chance to book, you know, certain programs. Um, so that could be a way of tapping into um, um, down that pathway. Yeah. But it's very rarely do they offer, yeah. you know. Um, okay. So probably just on the, the experiences side, because I know, Lee, you had mentioned about, um, you know, we're seeing more of a demand for millennials traveling on cruises now. However, but there's uh, also a lack of understanding also in terms of the market segment, like who are the passengers that are coming off these cruise ships? Uh, because past research says it's 50 plus. And also like, you know, suppliers need to be aware who your market is. Mm -hmm. Uh, and tailoring, you know, whatever your experiences are. Obviously, there's more risk involved uh, with the different types of passengers coming off. Um, and then also, you know, we're seeing repeat passengers coming in. So you're also having to see whether we need to offer new experiences. Then there's also the other part where there's new to cruise market. Who, you know, so, you know, what are your thoughts probably, you know, Lee and the rest of the, uh, the speakers uh, in this regard, you know, I think a lot of the times is uh, suppliers developing tours don't understand the market segment or the types of passages that are coming off these cruise ships. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in the last 10 years, we've seen a shift in the demographic of cruise passengers. And I think one of the reasons that's driving that is because, you know, cruise ships nowadays are being built with incredible amounts of technology. You know, like I'm talking when I mentioned about ease of access, right? Mm -hmm. There's so much technology about readily available that allows us to do things from our phone, essentially. So it's attracting a much younger generation of people. Um, and plus also, you know, the cruiser's selling point is, you know, come on a holiday, you don't need to unpack your suitcase. You could be in 13, 15, even 20 different countries, you know, with the ease of the comfort of, comfort of your cabin. So there's some really unique selling points that cruise are, are, are using to target that younger market. And they're also offering a lot of um, adventure style experiences on board the ship, as well as, you know, through shore excursion programs. So I think that's fundamentally one of the reasons why we're seeing, seeing that shift okay. in the demographic of people. And probably just out of curiosity, with the, the local suppliers uh, who provide the Shorex, you know, with Lea, Roy, and uh, Ely, you know, um, do you get the right type of information in terms of the passengers that are coming off? Like if you have elderly, you know, 50 plus, are you well equipped to be able to look after them when they are coming, you know, to your communities or to do the tours? I'd love to hear from you and your experience on that. Will we start with Roy? Uh, you just need to unmute. Okay, thank you, Alice. That's a very good question. Uh, our, our experience in Ravun is slightly different. Uh, before the, like, we get the schedule for the year from our shipping agent. Uh, and a um, uh, few days before arrival, uh, we get another final notice from the shipping agent. Uh, which gives uh, the breakdown of uh, um, uh, the, the tourists, uh, the, the visitors, uh, the numbers and where they're coming from, their nationality. Uh, because um, we have this boat coming in and out, uh, year in, year out. Uh, even uh, uh, the village itself, they have an idea, oh, this is a good ship, you know, oh, this uh, ship, uh, they don't uh, spend much. Like for the tourist market, uh, sorry, for the Australian market, um, to them, that's a very good one, uh, the Australian tourists. Eh? So uh, they, because the boat comes in and out, uh, they have an idea. But yes, we do get a, a final arrival notice that has the breakdowns of uh, the passengers eh? and their nationalities, et cetera. 
Okay. Nakaroy? Ili? Uh, for Sawani, yes, we have had those uh, a few days before uh, the trip uh, into Sawani. We are being informed if we have uh, uh, anyone coming in who does not take uh, dairy products, uh, uh, things like that. If if they don't take uh, oranges for the, as juice. Uh, so those are the little things that they specifically uh, let us know so that we are aware that uh, we have uh, some uh, someone that is coming uh, that would uh, need special attention uh, in cases like that. Uh, from my experience, uh, we normally just get the loose guess and uh, according to those that come to us, like the elderly guests, we try to um, cater them with uh, one car, say having three or four of them together and according to what they ask for, but with guests like, you know, with wheelchair and stuff like that, I do not have the platform to offer that service. And I just, we as a team, we are honest with what we offer to our guests. Because like uh, Samu was saying, you know, uh, safety and protocol is very important. So we also have that in mind, you know, the safety for our guests and for us as well as an operator. So that's something I experience and I just work accordingly to what I can offer for safety wise. Naka Lewa, Naka. Is there any other questions from the audience? We're actually, um, we've actually run out of time for our Q&A &A session. So if there's no other questions, probably I'll just um, go around the, to each of the panel to give any last comments uh, before we hand over back uh, to, to Jyoti. So we'll start with Lee. Any last comments for the audience? Um, I think maybe just one thing that I'd like to add is that at uh, FTE this year, um, we're planning to have a cruise symposium to talk through about um, how to be cruise ready. So I think a lot of the questions that were asked in today's forum is essentially the stepping stone to what is going to be showcased at FTE. So um, there'll be some information over the coming week or so that will go out to industry. So make sure you're registered um, to our newsletter. Um, the idea of the cruise symposium is to talk through about how to be cruise ready and where are some of the opportunities um, within that um, area of uh, cruise. So um, we're, we're hoping to have some, some very well known guests from different cruise brands come through. So we'll keep you all posted with that, but make sure you please please um, register or otherwise um, feel free to get in touch with me directly and I can keep you updated on that as well. Nakali. So probably just urging the, the audience uh, to register on Tourism Fiji's uh, newsletter to get more updates on, on the, the cruise symposium. symposium that Tourism Fiji is organizing. Sam, the last comments from you? Nakai, everyone. Just... Um... <clears throat> Just from the show excursion uh, side, you know, for the appointed operators, you know, it's always best that uh, um, that you know if if you have any if you have any new programs that is available that you want to showcase with us that we can offer to the to the cruise line. Yes, of course, you know, there is uh, we always welcome to come around and talk with you and uh, see whether we can help you out and uh, you know uh, brings you on board. Um, like I always said, you know, there needs to be a point of a difference, you know, that will be uh, very interesting for the Shorex team, you know, to offer the program to the guests, you know, we need to uh, continue expanding in this area. I mean, there's uh, the, the capacity of the cruise lines are getting bigger. You know? So at this stage, you know, from our experience, we have only managed to uh, service around uh, 1,000 passengers, you know, so there's another 2,000, 3,000 passengers on the loose, you know, and uh, I mean, like I said, we always welcome uh, anyone that brings in a new experience that we can offer to the cruise line. 
nakakasamo naka lewa Any last comments from you, Leo? Um, just thank you so much, team, for this platform. Thank you so much. I've actually learned so much from the information that has been shared and even learning from the other operators, how they, you know, they're sharing their experience, something that I can learn from and take about Vinaka. Vinaka Lewa. Ili? I joined Lewa in uh, thanking uh, uh, you for allowing us to be part of this panel today. It's been a great experience for us. And uh, on that note, uh, for last comments, uh, uh, for Sawani Eco Tours, we are thankful to take it to us for always be available to us uh, in every, uh, in uh, whichever area that we need to work on. If there are any questions, we can always rely on them uh, to help us out in everything that we want. Thank you very much, team. Vinaka Ili and Roy. Vinaka, thank you very much for this uh, great opportunity. We will definitely register uh, through uh, Tourism Fiji. And um, like I'd uh, mentioned earlier, that invite. I think in the month of July, there's a few boats coming to Nrubuni, like two or three days in a row. That would be an opportunity to, to come and, <laughs> sorry, and uh, witness the boats, like two boats or three boats in a row in Nrubuni. So that's all from Nrubuni. Thank you very much, Naka. Lovely. Naka Roika. Thank you for that invitation. All right, team. Uh, I know we have some questions still on the chat box. Uh, Kini from Heli Tours and uh, Matilita. What I will just ask if you can just send those qu questions directly to my email and then we'll come back to you on that. All right. Well, from, from our side, I just wanted to say thank you so much to our fantastic panel of uh, you know, speakers and also to the audience for your comments and your questions. Uh, and um, until next time, Mother Mother, and over to uh, Jyotishna Naka. Thank you, Alice. Uh, colleagues, we have come to an end for today's session. On behalf of the Ministry of Tourism and the Fiji government, please allow me to thank everyone for joining us today, especially to our panelists for sharing their ideas, experience, and views on the topic, to our development partner, International Finance Corporation, and Talanwa Consultancy. For for providing their support to our participants. Thank you for your contribution towards the discussion and we look forward to your further support for the upcoming PPDs and your contribution towards the development of the National Sustainable Tourism Framework. My colleagues, our next session will be on Wednesday, 22nd March, the future tourism workforce and entrepreneurs. So see you all, all next week, Winaka. 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 Naka. Naka. <laughs>